This is the big story that was being talked about over the weekend. Yahoo.com. PayPal pulls back, says it won't find customers $2,500 for misinformation after backlash. All right. So we got a lot of messages from people. My phone was exploding with people sharing the, the whole thing. Uh, uh, well, let's just get to the article here. PayPal has backtracked on a published policy that would have fined users $2,500 for spreading quote unquote misinformation, claiming the update had gone out quote unquote in error. Oh, it was just, just a friendly error that they would include in the documentation that misinformation shall be fined. And, you know, you just, just pull out 2,500 bucks from your PayPal account. Quote, an AUP notice recently went out in error that included incorrect information. PayPal is not fining people for misinformation, and this language was never intended to be inserted in our policy. Our teams are working to correct our pay- uh, policy pages. We're sorry for the confusion this has caused. End quote. A, pers- a spokesperson told National Review in a written statement. The course reversal comes after the policy changes had started to attract media scrutiny as well as criticism on Twitter. Former PayPal president David Marcus even blasted the company over the implications that it could seize customers as money for finding their view uh, for finding their views objectionable. Quote, it's hard for me to openly criticize a company I used to love and gave so much to. But PayPal new uh, PayPal's new AUP goes against everything I believe in End quote. The cryptocurrency entrepreneur said Saturday, quote, a private company now gets to decide to take your money if you say something they disagree with. Insanity. End quote. Tech Titan Elon Musk replied, agreed. Oh, in a comment that got thousands of likes. Wow. Elon just said all he has to say is agreed. And he gets thousands of likes. The policy updated appeared to authorize the company to pull a significant sum of money from the accounts of users who spread quote unquote misinformation among other newly listed offenses. The new conditions were scheduled to be added to the restrict, uh, restricted activity section of the PayPal user agreement effective November 3rd, the Daily Wire first reported. Changes include uh, included prohibitions on quote the sending, posting, or publication of any messages, content, or materials that quote promote misinformation. While the prior policy already forbade hate, intolerance, and discrimination, the new one would have explicitly applied to specific protected groups and, quote, individuals or groups based on protected characteristics. Identities under this umbrella include race, religion, gender, or gender identity, and sexual orientation. The firm's current rulebook doesn't list these terms. It's unclear whether PayPal will also pull back these specific prohibitions on discriminatory language or if it is only scrubbing the misinformation clause. So, yeah, you know, this is uh, the, the, the fact, look, the story right now is, oh, they pulled it back because, you know, the public didn't like it. But here's the thing. If the public didn't say anything, they would have gone through with it, number one. Number two, the fact that it's even in there to begin with. I don't care if it was a mistake. The fact that it's in there means that at some level, some drafting of the, the language, the verbiage in the document contained this idea. And for some reason, it was left in there when they released it publicly. I mean, and it, it shouldn't surprise any of us, really, that those of us, especially if you're part of following the stuff we've been talking about and others like us. I mean, this was coming to PayPal. It was it was just a matter of time. And again. I think it's just a matter of time. PayPal is going to do this type of deal. They're going to pick and choose who gets to access their platform and who doesn't. And it's going to be based not on, you know, legitimate reasons, uh, more so the woke sort of playbook, progressive woke playbook that we've clearly seen is uh, (laughs) not working in terms of controlling society. So the pushback is there. But if you can choke them out, that's how you win. You know, that's or at least these controllers, that's how they win. They they want to choke people out. They don't want people to have 
unrestricted access to monetary freedom or monetary uh, markets, things of that nature. Very mark of the beast. Got to have the mark to buy or sell. Um, and, uh, you know, this all of it has to do with the economy. Uh, so a couple economic updates from, uh, well, one here from our president. Got Harry. This is the New York Times and the headline Biden warns inflation will worsen if Republicans take Congress. That's right. It's those darn Republicans that'll make inflation worse. Oh, man. President Biden laced into Republicans on Friday for trying to enact policies that would make, quote, every kitchen table cost go up. While lavishing tax cuts on big corporations, shedding his usual tone of bipartisanship a month ahead of the midterm elections. I don't even want to read the rest of this. The point is, you know, he's <laughs> blame Republicans for inflation, right? It's not, you know, it's, it's, it's not both aisles. It's not the Fed. It's not the central bankers. It's, uh, it's just Republicans. Darn Republicans. Ugly Republicans. Oh no, there's some spammy spam going on in the chat. Hold on, I gotta, I gotta get this uh, person out of there. Block. You are blocked. Block. Why aren't you being blocked? Uh oh. Did I completely mess it up? Sorry. Trying to get this. Uh... Yeah, we need to get another mod in there into the chat sometimes. There can be some interesting visitors. All right, continuing on here. So, yeah, Biden, inflation, Republicans will make it worse. You know, uh, but, you know, all Republicans, Republicans have to do or anybody has to do, especially at the Fed over there, is to uh, turn on that money printer. Money printer. go burn. And things will just be right back to normal. All right. I don't know what's going on with chat. I don't know if it's broken. Did I break chat? Did something happen? Okay, hold on. Let me double check here because are we still live? Are you guys still there? Still there. Still there. Okay. <laughs> Salt to Paul, I see you. Okay, all right. I think we're still live. Maybe. Fun. Fun stuff. Okay, let's continue on here. So, um, along with all these changes, uh, one of the big changes we've been talking about it for years, but I think it's becoming more and more tangible. Block, 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 blockchain is cryptocurrency, and uh, we knew this was coming. CNBC.com headline: Treasury's financial stability watchdog warns cryptocurrencies could threaten safety of U.S. economy. Not money printing to oblivion. Not locking down the entire economy, world economy and small businesses and just shutting everything down. That's not a threat to U.S. economy, but cryptocurrencies. You a crypto Chad? Are you a D-Gen? Well, you're a threat to society. The Treasury Department warned Monday that unregulated cryptocurrencies could pose a risk to the U.S. financial system. Yeah, that's the point. It doesn't. The whole thing is that you don't need the U.S. financial system to operate. Is that being un-American? Well, it depends who you ask, I guess. The warning was a part of the first major public report released by the Treasury's Financial Stability Oversight Council on Digital Assets. The council identified digital or crypto assets, such as stable coins, as well as lending and borrowing on the industry's trading platform, as an important emerging vulnerability. Quote, the report concludes that crypto asset activities could pose risks uh, to the stability of the U.S. financial system and emphasize the importance of appropriate regulation, including enforcement of existing laws. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen said, quote, it is vital that government stakeholders collectively work to make progress on these recommendations. More or less saying we're losing control. We need to figure out a way to maintain control. The council first designated digital assets, a priority area in February. Uh, and it kind of goes on here. And yes, we know, we know sort of the situation currently that 
Uh, Bitcoin is considered a commodity. Ethereum is also considered a commodity, although there's lots of interesting uh, arguments on the other side of that. There seems to have been some hanky panky to get Ethereum to be considered a commodity under the U.S. the watchful eye of the U.S. government. And uh, you know, there's um, I don't know. Some people might think there's a conflict of interest, but you know, what do I know? I know nothing. <laughs>